Munster, over many years, um, has seen the coming and going of a variety of military activists, for want of a better word, uh, from the Vikings uh, to the Spanish Armada, uh, to slave ships that came up looking for slaves from Algeria. Uh, Munster has had a long tradition of military heritage. One of the big reasons why Cork was uh, such an important area for defence was that it was a big trading town. It was a provisioning town for the Navy. Also, second largest natural harbour in the world and the last stop before you head west, before America. It was probably inevitable because of the geographical location of Cork Harbour and the fact that it's a very easily defended harbour that it would become the subject of military fortification and uh, the development of military fortifications, defensive fortifications around Cork Harbour can still be seen today. Overall, the forts here in Cork Harbour were referred to as coastal defence forts. And by that, they had massive guns protecting the harbour. Here on Spike Island, we have a fabulous selection of the various types of guns. And they're all here for people to see and, and actually be amazed at the size of them and the complexity of them. Uh, there is still full physical evidence of the magnificent fortress that was built there. That's a classic star-shaped fortress, uh, most of which is still in place and can be seen today. We're very fortunate on Spike in that we have four pillars of heritage. The British and Irish military one is the first one. The second pillar then is imprisonment and incarceration. The third element of our heritage would be the social history. The fourth element is Spike Island in the Cork Harbour setting. All of those four elements have been massively expanded and interpreted and their artefacts beautifully restored and exhibited here for our visitors. Camden is one of the three um, main harbour forts. They were all built roughly at the same time. They were modified over several hundred years. Camden was originally built on the footprint that it is now back in 1800, completely remodelled in 1860. Camden originally would have been a bastion fort like Spike. When you look at the hills, they look like hills with buildings on them. They're both actually forts covered in earth. As the guns got bigger, when they hit the stone walls, they shattered and they actually hurt more people and killed more people. So the best defence against the new big guns was earth. Many of Camden's um, artillery uh, positions that batteries were put underground or put behind big mounds of earth. It's much bigger than people think. Um, we have quite a few tunnels, there's a lot of buildings. Every year we try to open a little bit more and more. We have quite a few of the old uh, casemated barracks rooms turned into museums and exhibition rooms. There's plenty to see, there's lots of military history, there's, there's British military history and then the later Irish military history. Um, there are numerous uh, important um, military installations that were here in the Cork area, evidence of them that you can see still today in some cases. Uh, these would include um, the likes of Ballancolic powder mills, which was a really important element of the infrastructure of the military. Enterprising uh, individual Charles Henry Leslie saw the opportunity in Ballancolic, it was only six miles east. Now, the, the making of gunpowder is quite explosive, so you need an extensive area with buildings scattered across the site in case of explosion. Uh, it was wooded and it, has, uh, it had the water to drive the machinery to, to make the gunpowder. The British Army expanded um, the mills. They also built the barracks beside it and they enclosed the whole complex uh, with a high wall. What is fantastic about the gunpowder mills is, is what's surviving. Nearly 90% of the buildings that were developed over, over the period of, of 100 years uh, are surviving, albeit in ruins. But it's a fascinating trail. Today, it's part of the regional park in Ballancolic, and you're traveling along the canals, um, and it's a wonderful amenity with nature trails and orienteering trails through it and you're passing through a history of time. Cove um, became important to the military because of its um, geographical location. It's situated on the largest island in the harbour and from 1862 onwards had a direct rail link 
uh, from effectively from the rest of the country. And the physical structures that were built as a result of the military presence and their needs uh, can still be seen today. Places like Admiralty House, uh, places like the large houses on the low road, um, various offices and buildings, the remains of a barracks, um, they're all part of the infrastructure of Cove and they would have been there directly as a result of uh, the importance of the port to uh, the military and by military I mean Army, Navy and later Air Force. There are extraordinary stories um, that reflect the history that we have been speaking about. Uh, all of these can be enjoyed through the walking tours, the various museums that we have and visits to institutions that are now open. The vast and widespread history and heritage of uh, Cork Harbour, the area and indeed its military history uh, is a significant and important element of what's best about Ireland's ancient East. The stories of the peoples who were here, of the activities that they undertaken, being told by real storytellers uh, in this lush uh, landscape and estuary that leads into Cork Harbour is an integral part uh, of Ireland's ancient East. Uh, what you should remember when you visit an area like this uh, is that under every stone, uh, around every corner, there's a wealth of interesting, engaging and entertaining history and heritage to be extracted uh, that can be enjoyed by all ages, uh, all visiting groups, all families, all cultures and uh, Cork Harbour is the place uh, for people to come and enjoy that. Hi, my name is Ryan Howard. I'm manager here with South and East Cork Area Development, CCAD. Uh, we're a rural development NGO based on the south coast of Ireland. I hope you've enjoyed this piece, which celebrates our natural and man-made history and heritage. And I also hope someday that you will get the opportunity to come and visit South and East Cork and enjoy this area for yourself.